live from Pittsburgh, Kansas, where creamy Italian on a cracker is actually an entree. It's the 2018 Spring Convocation with President Steve Scott. This afternoon, campus leaders Laura Washburn, Amy Height, Aaron Sullivan, and Michael Clore. Our first edition of Student Spotlight. And special guest, NFL Pro Bowler and inspirational speaker, Kendall Gannon. Now, appearing in Ultra HD, please welcome President Steve Scott! Turnout. Beautiful day it is. Great. Beautiful day. We, have we done this four times? We've done it four times. Seriously. I'm hoping we get to five. Well, let's... That'd be good. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be real good. You know, uh, I was with some folks this week. Dr. Olson and I, we've been out seeing different departments and colleges and visiting about things, and I invited folks to come to this, and uh, they're pretty excited about it. Somebody said, well, I want to come see the videos. Can you believe that? I, well... Someone else said, why do you do those silly videos? I don't know. It just, seems like, I just, it just seemed like something we could do. We can do those things. But it, I do want to welcome you. This is a neat thing we do. And, and you'll see only time of year where all of our employees are invited. Uh, university support staff, I saw those folks coming in. Glad you're here. University professional staff is here. Faculty, of course, is here. Academic leaders and leaders across the campus. So it's just a neat time for us to come together. We'll talk a little bit about what this all means, why we do what we do, why we get up every day and feel so good about this place and believe in this place. So we'll do a little bit of that. But we'll also have a little bit of fun. Oh, I hope so. And, and when that person said something about the videos, I thought, well, I hope we have some. Do we have some? We have a video. We have a video. We have a video. You, you know what would be neat if, if that video kind of introduced us to the semester? I think we can do that. We can? We all can. Right, let's, let's, let's roll let's it. Try. In a world where higher education reigns supreme, in the dawning of a new semester rises, one university will put it all on the line to empower the future leaders of the planet. Syllabi will prevail. Knowledge will endure. Learning will resume, and without a doubt, Pittsburgh State University will learn them good. Class is now in session. All right, that's a great. How about that? Remember, I love it. How many universities do you think have a trailer to start the spring semester? I, one in the country. One gorilla, one. one trailer. <laughs> what do we got next, Chris? Hey, let's welcome our guest. You saw him on the screen. Please welcome now to the stage, Pittsburgh State's KNEA President, Laura Washburn. University Support Staff President, Michael Clore. Faculty Senate President, Amy Height. And Hello, University welcome. Professional Good Senate President, Aaron Thank Sullivan. You. There you go. Wow, how about this? We thought this would be kind of fun. What do you guys think? Lights awesome. are bright. The lights are bright. <laughs> yeah. You Great have sunglasses? Time. Oh, I've left them. You, you had them on the video. <laughs> so we have some pictures of these folks, don't we? I yeah, we, we had them come up. We can oh, go back yeah. and Let's show go you. Back we and look at that. Aren't those awesome? Those look great. You know, everybody on campus has a full time job. And then when people step into these leadership roles, they basically just volunteer. I think you volunteer to step up and do something extra. <laughs> And so you want to say first off, thank you very much for doing this. Okay, really do appreciate the fact that you, you've stepped up and hopefully you're learning about the institution a little bit more than in your own area and that, that's good for you and good for us as well. So we appreciate your work. So I thought we'd just start with some questions and see what you all think and start with the question of what are you looking forward to in this semester, kind of from a personal basis. I'm looking forward to the nice weather and softball and baseball season starting. And so. nice weather is coming. Yes. You're sure? Okay. I'm hoping. Okay, that's awesome. 
Or we'll be playing baseball in the snow. Well, and we have turf this year, so I guess it can rain. And we're still going to play Jim that. Johnson, I think so. So, Amy, what do you think? Spring, for me, is always about commencement seeing students meet that end of their journey, graduate, go on to their profession. Yeah, exciting time. Yeah. Michael, what are you looking forward to on a personal basis? Not being president. <laughs> <laughs> I think everybody who served as the leader of our governance group knows that feeling. Are you counting the meetings that you have? Oh, I got a few left. Yeah, I got Are you talking about the meetings you have left with me? No. I better not answer that. <laughs> yeah, very good. Laura, what are you looking forward to? Well, I love being in the classroom, so my students and I will be studying theory and getting really deep into things, and then Caitlin Roth will have her thesis defense, and the new issue of Cow Creek Review will come out, so oh, those will be, be exciting. Yeah. And leading the faculty unit as well. Well, I didn't say I was looking forward to that. Yeah, I just yeah, do that. I understand. I understand. <laughs> no, I understand that. So then, as you think about the, the group that you lead, You've got some things in mind, I think, that you'd like to accomplish. Each of you would, and let's just go this other direction. Laura, what are you guys thinking about trying to accomplish this semester? Well, uh, we're on a couple task force with the administration teams on, for safety and security and for summer school. And so those are big priorities. But as always, um, we're all about teaching, and we want to work with the administration for good opportunities for, to keep faculty retained and, and good professional development opportunities. Very good. Michael, what about your group? Well, of course, uh, as you all know, we still have some at-large positions open. I'd love to yeah. fill the whole Senate for the year. We only have a couple months, but... Yeah. Uh, and... Uh, the survey. There's a, there's, there's there's a, a survey, survey yes. There's a survey. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't going to mention it yet. Uh, we're, we're working on that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to help you, Michael. <laughs> we work together on these things. Uh, we, got a, we have a survey coming out, um, hopefully uh, sometime in the beginning of February. We have a meeting tomorrow to discuss some right. things that we need to maybe do some changes. Yeah. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. I think we're going to be working maybe with the UPS on that. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm looking forward to seeing how those results come out. Very good. So you get to go to the Regents meetings every uh, month. That's been fun for you, hasn't yes. it? I've enjoyed the trips to Topeka. Really? Well, great. You ride with Dr. Olson. You guys have great conversations. We do. I bet. We it's enjoy kind of, our conversations. It's kind of a neat thing. So what about the Faculty Senate? What's on your agenda? Well, we've taken on a small task, general education oh, reform. My. <laughs> they used to say you could either move a cemetery or revise general education. Pretty similar in terms <laughs> yeah. of difficulty. We're making progress. Yeah, we I have know a you are. great leadership team for people who have taken this on, and it's moving forward. Right. And this next year is going to be very much an active time for them. So right. you're going to hear a lot about general education over the next year. And you really want the whole campus to be involved yes. in that conversation. Yes, we yeah. all have to embrace it, not right. just the faculty, everyone. It's, it has to be owned by PSU. Exactly. Right. Okay. Erin, what about you? Um, we're looking forward to increased participation. We know that some of our professional staff have concerns, and so we need to hear them so that we can try to fix those concerns or at least try to come up with some solutions. So. Sure. Very good. Okay. So as you, uh, let's just get to the word concern. Uh, we all know that uh, we're facing a lot of financial pressures. It's been very clear. You don't have to look very far in the press to see it. Uh, you feel it in our meetings that we have. Dr. Olson, as I mentioned, and I went out and talked to the library staff this week, the arts and sciences. We're going to be in the College of Technology tomorrow afternoon visiting with people. And that's really on the forefront of people's minds is the financial pressures that we're feeling. So as you, as you think about that, as you think about representing your group, uh, what's your biggest concern as, as you think about not just the short term but also the long term influence, the impact of these pressures? For me, the uncertainty is causing um, a change in our culture, not mm -hmm. a culture that we've had. Um, and when people are upset, they're not giving, putting our best foot or face forward for our students. And so I don't want it to impact the students' experiences while they're on campus just because of our financial concerns. Right, right, okay. For okay. faculty, I think the biggest concern is resources, making sure we have the resources to educate the students and making sure that we also retain the quality faculty that we already have here on campus. Right, absolutely. Okay. Michael, what are you seeing? Uh, job cuts and pay increases. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of people feel like they've been left out on pay increases. 
So, and, that, and that's true. Yes. The way the state did the salary increase this last year, uh, 254 people got a raise and all the rest of the employees didn't. Faculty unit had an agreement with them that made a modest increase, but it was very, very modest, certainly. So, yeah, good points. Okay. Laura, what do you think? Well, I, th I think we've covered a lot of it. I, I am also concerned about will we be able to provide the appropriate environment for students and retain those students and faculty um, if we have too deep cuts? And uh, it makes me think about even the Pittsburgh economy and mm -hmm. how it will impact that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. And these are the kind of conversations that we're having and also the conversations that we're having on, on the campus. Uh, you know, one of the things we, we talk about, we talk about several things as we look forward and we think about the financial pressures. One is we think about growing our enrollment. But a, a, just as equally important piece of that is how do we improve our retention efforts? And I know many of you know that uh, we've had a retention effort going underway, RPM, and Dr. Olson's led that along with Dr. Irwin. They have a group that they work with. But that's something that sometimes we think about getting the campus ready for new visitors, meeting prospective students, being good ambassadors. But what can your groups do on the side of, and we're running a little short of time, but just on the side of retention, how do we help retain students and what can you do to contribute to this effort? So. From a professional staff standpoint, not everyone has opportunity to come across students, but mm -hmm. when we do, say hello and engage with the students, even if it's just in the student center when you're downstairs grabbing a bagel. It's just really reaching out and making them understand that you care, that they're here and engaging. And create a friendly atmosphere yes. and accepting. Exactly. And what about you guys? You're really at the forefront of it. Again, just taking that extra time, making sure that each student knows their place here at PSU and that the faculty will support them and be behind them 100%. Right. And our faculty are good at that. I mean, yes. they really have historically been very good at that, going the extra mile with their students. Michael, what about your group? I completely agree with uh, these two and uh, just recruit, um, not just, you know, outside of campus. We just recruit to talk highly of how Pitt State is and how great it is to be here. So if you're in the backyard or at church or wherever and you've got somebody there who's got a young person in their family, it's an opportunity to recruit and also to kind of reinforce that good things are happening on the campus and we'll take good care of people. And Laura, what about the, the union as you think about the unit? Well, we're also on the first line with teaching Absolutely. and um, we have a reputation for being a caring campus that gets to know our students and as we look at the students who are at risk um, and think about retention, just reaching out to them and helping them get to the support services we already have on campus when they need it is right. vital. Right, absolutely. Hey, one of the, uh, we, we face, every year we face loss. And uh, recently, uh, as you all know, uh, Marjorie Schick passed away. And we, we did an announcement on it. We, we had her photo on the website. And I was just struck by the Facebook posts. And they were from former students, students from years and years ago. And so many of those comments were about, she made a difference in my life. She, in one class, I, did, I made a decision to do something different with a minor, with a major. And so I've been asked the students about mentoring and who's made a difference in their lives. But I thought we'd just do a, a run through with you all too in terms of, you know, because we're mentors. And to be a good mentor, my guess is you had to have a good mentor. And so I wonder who's kind of made a difference in your life. We'll start down here this time, Laura. But Who's made a difference in your life? Well, I have had many um, wonderful mentors throughout my academic career. Uh, Dr. Nancy Walker at um, Missouri State was the director of composition, and she just did such an excellent job of making, of trusting her faculty to make good decisions and giving them opportunities to speak to each other and learn from each other by making groups to talk about teaching or groups to talk about writing, and, uh, and her door was always open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. accessible. Michael? Well, uh, I highly doubt he's out here. He's probably actually out working uh, as a man on campus. And when I first started, uh, you'd say I, I knew everything, but come to find out I don't um, <laughs> when it comes to electrical. But uh, Sometimes mentors help us understand. Exactly. It was, a, it was a guy that I worked with uh, until he moved to the boiler room. His name's Jeff York. He's a, he was an electrician out here for, uh, I think, 13 years, but he also worked in the plumbing shop. Yeah. But he's taught me a lot about this campus. and. I mean, he had a lot of knowledge. Yeah. Helped me out a long guidance. ways. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Hey. My mentor would be Cheryl Giefer. Really? She was my first advisor <laughs> in nursing, uh, one of my first faculty members. We worked together in the hospital setting, and now she's my boss. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. 
and not surprising either. Erin? My mentor on campus was Dr. Beisel. I was a marketing major and his door was always open. Yeah. He was a really good guy. Yeah, some common, some common themes. It'll be interesting to hear what the students say about that as well. I think they'll be naming some people in the audience, so that'll be fun. So we've got one more quick thing, and that is we've got, we've got a video, don't we? We do. But before we go to that video, we, we went out on campus and we asked uh, people, what's one word that captures Pittsburgh State University? And so kind of as a lead into that video, we would ask you, kind of round robin here, one word, Pittsburgh State University. It turns out my vocabulary is getting smaller and smaller, so I, I have fewer words to choose from. You all aren't that way because you're all very bright, but I just wonder, what is that? What's that one word here? Special. Special? Students. Students. Family. Family. Transformational. Transformational. You've been reading our mission statement. Come on. Ah, I like that. I like that a lot. Those are cool. Those are great words. Hey, let's give these folks a round of applause. They've done a great job. Thank you very much. Those were all, those were all great words. Let's hear what the rest of campus had to say with one word. Hey guys, I'm Brett. There's a <laughs> For, who cares? No one knows my name. There's a lot of words you could use to describe Pitt State, and we we're wondering what words you would use. So we've gone around campus today talking to students, faculty, staff, just to see how they would describe Pitt State in one word. Here we go. Describe Pitt State in one word. Football. I don't know. Hold on. <laughs> oh, that's so many more words than describe Pitt State in one word. Hmm. All right, thank you so much. <laughs> Opportunistic. Welcoming. Excellent. The one word I choose is community. Describe Pitt State in one word. Great. I'm Levi, my word is epic. Describe Pitt State in one word. Amazing. Um, amazing. That's two words. <laughs> Let's try that again. All right, describe Pitt State in one word. Oh, stop. 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 <laughs> Real quick, describe Pitt State in one word. Um, eventful. Describe Pitt State in one word. Family. Yes, it's great. Are we family? Are we cousins? Yeah. <laughs> describe Pitt State in one word. Cold. Cold. Use another word. Fantastic. And another word. Red. Home. Home, yes. Awesome. Perfect, Perfect yeah, word. Perfect. Describe Pitt State in one word. Family. We're here for one reason. We just need you to describe Pitt State in one word. Fantastic. Describe Pitt State in one word. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. That's it. Go back to work. Go advise people. Have a great day. Thank you. That's good. I like that. That's good. That's pretty cool. All right, you ready to bring out our students? This, these are the stars of the show. No, don't take that badly over there. The I am. Stars. Let's give him a big round of applause. Pursuing his MBA from Bartlesville, Oklahoma, Mr. John Botts. Communication. <laughs> Communication major and senior from Olathe, Kansas. Please welcome Miss Ray Seller. From way out west in Garden City, Kansas, musical education major Ivan Vasquez. All right, Ivan. Our very own hometown, the homecoming queen, yeah. soon to be plastic Thanks engineering be technology graduate, Shelby Bicknell. <laughs> From Wichita, Kansas, exercise science major, Creighton Sanders. And from the beautiful country of Paraguay, a music and instrumental performance major, Amelia Cardenas. All right, what a great group. We just randomly selected these folks. If you've prepared for an accreditation visit, you know that's not true. So these are terrific young people. We appreciate you doing this. Is this kind of nerve-wracking up here? No, I don't. You guys. Look at, Amelia's not, she's, she's played in front of hundreds, thousands of people. So, and you've marched in front of a ton yeah, of people, right? Yeah, absolutely. And John, you've sold cotton candy to thousands. <laughs> right? And you were the homecoming queen. So these guys are stars. They really are. So we're glad you're here. Uh, you saw the video. So we'll just start with something simple. How about if we do that? Amelia, we'll start with you. One word, Pittsburgh State University. Opportunity. Opportunity. Brayton? Tradition. Worthwhile. Relationships. Inspirational. Uh, dorky. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> thought it was starting to sound like password. <laughs> Dorky. Really? Just the, the interviewer. interviewer. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Sean, is he on our payroll? <laughs> Dr. Cajal, I think, is a grad assistant for us over in USI. But, no, that's all. Right. I get it. You're a good man. Okay, so with that, let's try a couple other things. Uh, favorite tradition on campus. We'll go back this way, John. Favorite tradition. I would say Apple Day, just because it's so unique to the state. Um, I would say either Paint the Town Red or Family Day. This is my, that was, last year was my eighth Family Day, so. Your eighth? Well, my sister came to I was going to say. We have a retention program, but it, <laughs> but at some point you got to leave. Okay, we love that too. We love to sit. <laughs> Ivan, well, uh, being part of the band, um, I would have to say the gorilla walk with the uh, with the football team, just bringing two sets of families together for a bigger purpose. Yeah, definitely. well said. Yeah, drum major, you may have recognized Ivan. You may recognize me doing this. <laughs> so, I'd like to do that someday. By the way, yeah, I wake up. And yeah, do I'd like to do that. Yeah, it <laughs> looks pretty simple. You don't have to learn the music. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I saw Ivan down on the field, he'd say, I love that jacket. It's like, Ivan, do you expect me to just take this jacket off and give it to you? <laughs> right? Yeah, just you did say that. Just yeah. open, yeah. So Shelby, what, what about you? Tradition, favorite one? I honestly have the homecoming parade. My family and I have been going for years, so Heavy. it's better when it's warm, though. And then to, uh, to be the homecoming queen and to realize it, to experience it that way, that had to be a kick, too. Yeah, that was different, way sure. different. Sure. Candy on the side, you yeah. have candy. And doing, no candy in the, doing the, way. the candy <laughs> riding. <laughs> That's right. And Creighton, if you don't know, Creighton plays football for us and an outstanding uh, athlete. As a football player, I would have to say the gorilla walk is one of the greatest traditions we have because just being a part of the band, it really just, as a football player, when you're walking down, you just see the crowd, the see the town, see the community that supports you, and know that you have them behind your back. It's, it gets me riled up and ready to go knock some heads off. Cool. <laughs> so one Friday a, a year ago, you were in the choir mm -hmm. and sang, and then you think your mom drove you up to Kansas City, or you guys or drove up to Topeka and played in a football game the next day. Washburn. Kind of an, Washburn. Yeah, against Washburn. Kind of an interesting story about uh, Creighton. You had to give up the choral work, I believe. Yeah, I, and I, I was, was missing too much. I did, I just, yeah, Coach Beck probably didn't like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was missing too much choir. Oh, <laughs> I got it now. I got it. Yeah, yeah I got it. Sorry, Dr. Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's not mad at it. me. Emily, what? What it's really hard to name one. Um, as an international student, everything is new. So, and everything was amazing. It's still, it's amazing to me. So, I love every tradition that we have here. To you, to you. Yeah. yeah. So I've always thought we invite the international students in that first meal we have for them on campus, the very first time they're on campus, and we serve them Italian. Yeah. <laughs> I've never understood that. Why it's do we so do American. that? I mean, why do we? Yeah, it's so American. Why do we do that? I don't know. I guess we survive these things. So, real quickly, favorite place on campus? We'll go back this way, Amelia. Favorite. This place is my favorite. Oh, place I can't on campus. imagine. Yeah. You play the violin, and you've been in one of our videos, even. Yeah, and that video was amazing. But I was actually part of the first string quartet that played in the lobby, even before everything else was done so being able to see that as a student and to experience that and then of course being able to play here in every concert is just a wonderful experience yeah. that's right that's right great i would have to say the weed physical and plaster center i'm yeah. there every day probably spend six hours a day because i'm a track and field athlete as well right and right so it's my, yeah, it's you, my home you got here at the right time didn't you all yeah. those things were finished and <laughs> yeah you got you got two more years with us perfect right. yes yeah, sir exactly how about you, favorite place on I campus? love the Technology Center. It's full of opportunities, so I spend a lot of time you there. You should do, do, exactly. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, anyone familiar with uh, McRae, the music building, on the third floor, there's a sofa right next to the practice <laughs> rooms. <laughs> that after, after working your butt off and just wanting to relax, that couch is home. <laughs> <laughs> so stay away from that couch, because yeah. I just got, <laughs> <laughs> got that couch. Do not use that couch. Bob Keeley, he's never up there laying on that couch. Oh, no. <laughs> His, actually, his office is right across from me. See? So when, I, when I'd be ready for, get ready for my lessons, I'd be just, okay, it'll be fine. That's, good. That's very good. Great. Um, right. When I'm not at home, I'm usually in the third floor of the library. So 
Ah, oh, the new third floor new of the library, floor, yes. Randy Roberts. Boy, that is spectacular. It reminds me of Target, so I love it there. You what? It reminds me of Target. It does remind me of Target. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I would not go up there in a, in a red shirt and uh, khakis. <laughs> because you'd look like you're working at Target. Exactly. I went by Target once on the way to an alumni event, and somebody asked me for help. Because I had on the red shirt and, and the khakis. So John, we got you all set up. Your favorite place on campus? Um, I would say the Student Center, just because the Overman Student Center, um, it, we did a really good job renovating it. Um, and there's always something going on there, always something to do, um, food, that kind of stuff. Absolutely. Shout out to Jeff Steinmiller and his great group that runs the Student Center. So, uh, you know, some of you have been ambassadors. Is that true for the admissions office? Who's been, you've done that? Ray, have you been an ambassador? Yep. Advancement, Advancement, but not uh, admissions. Uh, but if you think about talking to a prospective student about Pitt State, what would you think they need to know about this place that they that would help them make a decision about whether to come here or not? Oh, uh, we'll start, with, we'll start with John. I'll start. Um, I would say uh, once they're here, uh, if they put in some effort, they'll they'll find a place. They'll find somewhere that they fit in, uh, and it, it does take a little bit of effort, but they will find their mm -hmm. spot. Um, I would say that who you were in high school is not who you were going to be in college, mm -hmm. and the school is so, I'm going to use transformational. You know, I mean, that's, uh, <laughs> she works in the marketing department. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. um, but it's so, true, though. It's yes, true. that I'm definitely not the person I was when I came into Pitt, so it's definitely transformational. Yeah. Ivan? Um, I'd have to say that uh, when you come to uh, Pittsburgh State, you're not only joining the university, but the town as well. Mm -hmm. Just the people are absolute believers of the university, and they, they just work hand in hand together. Right. So, right. so you ever go to Harry's? <laughs> All the time. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> cinnamon rolls. You like those? I can have their cinnamon rolls. You haven't? Oh, oh, I can't eat gluten, so I just can smell them. They <laughs> <laughs> just work fantastic, honestly. All right, that's good. good thought. Yeah. Yep. All right, I gotta tell someone that even though it's small, it doesn't mean there's not top-notch programs here. A lot of amazing things happening. Right. And sometimes you have to overcome that because the scale is smaller than the other institutions they might look at. But right. still, lots of choices, lots of places to fit in. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. There's there's so much here to offer as a student as an, as an athlete. There's a lot of clubs and also the teachers. I love how the teachers are. The instructors want you, they want you to pass. They're just not coming into their work job and, and saying, all right, get your homework done, have a good day. Okay. They actually, if you need help, very come helpful. to my office hours, and they're very helpful. That's great. Um, I would tell them that this is a place that embraces individuality. Every student has a space to grow as an individual, as a professional, and just develop themselves. Yeah, very good. Wow, you guys. So now I want to talk about mentorship, okay? And I came through this place. I went to school here years ago, John. Years ago. I just knew you were going to make a comment. Yeah. <laughs> and I had a mentor. You know, I asked the faculty or the governance leaders about mentorship, and I had a mentor. And he, he, he made just a very simple statement to me one day, and uh, his name is Paul Parker. Dr. Parker said to me, young man, you need to get a doctorate. And I had never thought about it before. I would never thought that I could do that. And I really kind of pushed back and said, seriously, do you think I could do that? And he said, absolutely, you could do that. And I called him one day to say, uh, would you write a letter in support of me get, working on my doctorate, getting into a doctoral program? He said, yes, I will. And by the way, I have a job open you might be interested in. Two months later, I was in that job. Five years later, he had retired and I was in the chair's job. And without that conversation, oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh, he was so... We crazy. had to dig deep for that one, by the way. Wow. We had to dig really deep for that Where one. did we find that? <laughs> my goodness. Archives. No negative laying in a lab somewhere. <laughs> Boy, I look young there. <laughs> Whatever happened to that jacket, I wonder. But anyway... Uh, but, you know, without that conversation, without that direction, without that encouragement, and it's the same thing our governance leaders talked about, I wouldn't be here today. 
So as, as you think about this campus, and I want you to be kind of non-political now, and, and don't say everybody, I love everybody, but there's been some individual, an individual that's really made a difference for you. So, so Amelia, what do you think? Who's that person for you? Um, it's been Dr. Susan Marchand in the music department. Um, even though I'm, I graduated with my bachelor's there and I love the MBA program and I, I'm finding new mentors there, she has been <laughs> fundamental in my, uh, in my career in making that transition from one department to the other as well. So. Sure, very good. Great. Um, I would have to say uh, Mrs. Potter in the psychology department. She yeah. truly just opened up my eyes and in that subject and just all aspects of college and life. She just really had really good wisdom to give out and just how to not be stressed going through college and taking every opportunity given. Good connection there. Mm -hmm. Shelby? I got to say Dr. Jean Norton. I think she's so intelligent and hardworking. Mm -hmm. It's inspiring. And I think that I, uh, I wouldn't have had an interest in going to grad school if it wasn't for her. So. I really see. Same, same feeling. Wow. That's nice. Uh, mine was uh, before I got to Pitt State. He was an alumni. And uh, it was my high school band director, uh, Mr. Ryan Elliott. He would frequently uh, would go to music camps in Kansas City. He'd frequently take us through Pittsburgh, out of the way. Just that, yeah. Nice <laughs> yeah, vacation. For uh, and, chicken or for? Uh, for lessons. For close lessons. Seconds, close seconds. For <laughs> and we just come take lessons here. And uh, huh. I never thought I'd go to college, but he really pushed me towards Pitt State, and I'm really glad I made it this far. Yeah. Um, I would have to say Mike Golett. Um, he was the first professor I met here when I came to Pitt Cares. And the, hmm. if anybody remembers the second floor of the student center before it was redone, it was really hot in there. And yeah. <laughs> everybody was sweating and everything, but he was the first professor I met. And I think Dr. Mason explained it perfectly that, um, that today was the first day of class was the first day that she had not received a hug from Mike Golett since he retired. Hmm. That just describes Thanks who he missed. was. Yeah. And um, yeah. he wrote my letter of recommendation for my scholarship that I was really grateful to receive because of him. So. Very good. John? Uh, you first. I think that's and then, <laughs> and then yeah. a, a close, a close It was going to hurt my feelings. Yeah. No, I know. I know you're, wow. you're waiting. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. John is going to create a business and do very well. Yeah. Right? yeah. So, no, seriously, um, though. Yeah, seriously, though. Um, <laughs> I would say, <laughs> I would say uh, Jeff Poe was a professor mm. I had uh, as a sophomore and as a senior, and uh, he really supported me. Uh, the whole time in between having him then. Uh, so yeah. Yeah. yeah, tremendous teacher for us, and he's here two years, I believe, and yeah. one outstanding teacher, the yeah. faculty member, one of those years. So, well, very good. It's a good message for all of us, though, how important that individual conversation is, even that very first moment on campus in the CARES program and, in, and connecting with somebody and what a difference that can make four years later as you apply to go to graduate school. So, very good. You guys are terrific. I'd love to talk longer, but uh, we don't have that much more time. So I want to say thank you for being here. Let's give them a round of applause. how much we care about you honestly you I mean that is that's just amazing so great way to end this segment and Chris says these guys get off the stage we've got a video introducing our next person is that what we've got you know you are a professional speaker when you have your own intro video let me tell Seriously, you the next we do does we do let's cue it up let's get that intro you want to differentiate yourself from people make sure they know how you feel Emotions drive us as human beings. If you're attentive to how they affect you both collectively and individually, your ability to succeed increases dramatically. I would say one of the most important human emotions is gratitude. 15 years in the NFL, there's two types of strengths. There's physical and there's emotional. But it's the emotional side of things, how you deal with people, how you deal with relationships, that makes all the difference in the world. And leadership comes in all forms. Create a good memory. Do something for somebody.
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome NFL Pro Bowler, color commentator for the Kansas City Chiefs Radio Network and proud gorilla, Mr. Kendall Gammon. I think there's probably a rule in all this that you should never follow students. No, no. Gosh. Uh, isn't that great? They're th what drives everything. It wasn't that long ago you were a student here. It was not. You're exactly right. It was not long ago at all. <laughs> 1991? Uh, was when I left, yes. And you left and uh -huh. uh, left with the championship ring. I did. I was very fortunate. Like that. That's pretty cool. And went on to play in a Super Bowl and a Pro Bowl. Yes, uh, I did. And, but as I got into the NFL, Super Bowls to me, score's not important. Oh, really? No, yeah. Just yeah. Part so, participation. But, uh, just participation. Yes, yes absolutely. Sure, sure, sure. You notice I say he played in the Super Bowl. So, you know, that, that video is, Chris and I talked about it earlier, that video is, it's just. Slick. Oh, it's slick. It is. Sizzling. We've never seen anything like it. It is so slick. And so, you know, we like balance. So what we did was we dug into the NFL archives, and we've got another video. <laughs> And, and we wanted to share it with everybody. It's Kendall Gammon, and your number? 83. 83. So let's see what that looks like. Let's see what it looks like. Oh. Okay. No. Somebody's got a lot of time on their hands. You know, you, you told me before you got hit in the head a lot, but I wasn't is, kidding. This, was is, I? this is a different part of your body. This is um, of... more than a little bit oh, disturbing. Oh, mercy. That was broken oh. ribs. Oh, now this, we've got some audio on this one. You can. Got a couple of good blocks. <laughs> Down the side. That was a broken leg. They talk about this. Just went down like he was shot. Well, Buchanan makes a move on it. You got two Kansas City guys down. Oh, my. But Buchanan makes a move on Kendall Gannon, number 83. And when he makes his move, Gannon, watch over on the left hand side. See the guy at the top? Watch him. He's going to make the move, and he just goes down. He tore his knee. That is Kendall Gammon, the lawn snapper for Kansas City, and he was hurt on this play. You'll see it on the uh, replay right after the snap. They just actually run is over Is it good when you're highlighted here. like this all the time? Yeah. Yeah. Get some again. Oh, His um, own man hits normally him not. And then I'm, a, I'm saw the player, and I haven't been able to hold this He footage. fell down a third time. <laughs> As he was trying to hustle downfield to cover that kick. So it doesn't look any better if they play it a number of times, though. does it? No. <laughs> so um, there's there's more to this one. Now now some of those you just roll back. You're pretty good at that. I'm a gymnast. You know, just kind yes. of rolling and kind of <laughs> kind of diffusing the impact. That. But uh, but that one that was painful. What happened there? That was actually when I came off the line. Um, after I just snapped it, my. My right guard actually hit me in the right spot in the knee, or the wrong spot, as it were, and broke my leg at that point. Uh, we all know I'm not bright enough to understand some things going on, and I kept uh, going and <laughs> went down a couple different times, and as they said, it looked like I'd been shot. Yeah, it did. <laughs> it, it, it was odd that you fell just before you could have made contact to make the tackle. That's what, that's, that was... I was I, I did, tackles to me were showy. I, I described myself as a sheepdog. I would herd them to other people yeah. <laughs> and let them share in the you know, You know, that says something about you, because how long did you play in the NFL? I played 15 years. There, there you yeah. go. The yeah. average person plays how long? Uh, 3.1. There you go. You know, it's, it's interesting. That was in Houston. My very first game was in Houston at the Astrodome. That was the first time after that game. That was my last game. I'd played 218 straight at that one that point in time. So kind of, kind of, wow. Yeah, so that you knew what you were doing to, to yeah, guess. that's pretty cool. So, you know, uh, you think about the, the number of employees we have on campus, and, and we have a good idea what a lot of them do. Actually, I have no idea what some of them do. I probably shouldn't admit that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But, uh, but, but everybody has a role. Everybody contributes, and there's some really unique jobs around, but I don't know that there's any job on campus or any role on campus that's more unique than yours. Uh, 
How would you describe what you do and how you contribute to Pittsburgh State? Well, I, I think I have a lot of different jobs and I like that. Um, certainly, first and foremost, uh, I'm an ambassador to the university and I always felt like I was even before I, I came on as an official employee with my name maybe being a little bit more public because of what I did. But, you know, raising funds for facilities and scholarships, leading different projects, being on different uh, task force, uh, and really just in general uh, representing Pittsburgh State the best way I know how. So I noticed that the video that we kind of teased you about uh, really talks about your, your speaking work yes. that you do. And I know when you do that, you're always introduced as a gorilla. You relate to the time on the campus and what you learned here. But uh, how many people do you think over the last few years you've been in front of to, to do those kinds of things? Oh, wow. A uh, lot? Yeah, I mean, thousands, thousands actually. Probably at this point in time, the last several years, you know, tens of thousands, yeah. de depending on when I'm speaking and then other things going on. And then when you think about the Chiefs uh, radio network uh, prior to halftime. Uh, <laughs> hey, thank you. <laughs> what, kind of, what kind of coverage does that have? What, well, what would you say? How do you guys rate that? Uh, well, we're the largest. We're, people may or may not be surprised to know we're the largest uh, radio network in the NFL. And we're the, we have the largest listenership and we have the largest amount of people who turn down the TV and listen uh, to the radio broadcast. It's obviously mm -hmm. because of Mitch, not because yeah. of me. Started long before that, but um, I mean, that's you know, in the millions each and every week. And, and I mean, I, I make no bones about it. I figure out a way to get Pittsburgh State Sure. And, and the word gorillas said in most of my broadcasts. Right. So I, right. I think that's something that's cool. Right. Yeah, and we appreciate that. That's good for us. Oh, I'm proud the, of it. Stins the brand. You know, there's a lot of similarities, it seems to me, between G Chiefs Nation, Gorilla Nation. There's a lot of, a lot of overlap there. Colors work. You see people at our games with the colors. You see people at <laughs> yes. their games with our colors. And, uh, and the tailgating, I think the tailgating that was so successful at the Chiefs games, I think we've benefited from that. I don't think there's any, any doubt about that. As you think about what you learned in sports and, and what you learned in the NFL and, uh, and you think about our student athletes and what we're doing with our athletics program, there's lots to be learned from athletics. Would you, I mean, is that, is that oh. your feeling and what you've seen? Yeah, no question about it. I, I think uh, you learn to deal with authority. Uh, you learn to uh, deal uh, with teammates. You, you learn uh, how to know really get on a schedule and be dedicated to something I, I think I when I speak to students and even younger students I always talk about the fact that uh, to me sports is no more or less important than a lot of disciplines because it's a discipline in and of itself of, of how you conduct yourself on an, uh, on an everyday uh, manner and, and really how you deal with people the relationships you build with mm -hmm. them you know, sometimes I'll be at a game and, and we'll be down, well, the bowl game, our football bowl game. You know, guys, we were down uh, 31 to 7 just before the half, 31 14th the half. And, and I think about those kids didn't quit. Uh, somebody drew out some pretty nice plays at halftime, coach. And we came back and won 48 31. Not that I keep track of all the scores, <laughs> but uh, pretty impressive. So some days I think about that when things don't go well for me or for us, and I think, well, am I gonna not show up for the second half? And I find inspiration in that, that our kids find a way to come back and play and, and not quit. And I think you can learn that in sports. Yeah, I think it's well said. I think you can draw back. I think a lot of us draw back on, on different experiences in college, sure. uh, some of the best times of our lives. Sure. And uh, uh, that helps us get through uh, difficult times in the future, I believe. You know, that's what I love about Pittsburgh State and what I do is the fact that I'm able to reconnect people some people that are that are giving monetarily some that aren't depends right, on right. where they're at in their life but the one thing that i always get is is thank you for reconnecting me with the university that's what makes me feel good and we've had a great experience with uh, bob lepke yeah uh, who helped us with just spoke the, with him last night as and he, did, he helped us obviously with the strength conditioning equipment and uh, he's not finished supporting Pittsburgh State. No. he loves what he the reconnection that really you founded you you found bob and really made a connection with him and and I've gotten to know him, and Jim Johnson has, and Tim. Back I'm glad and, he didn't see that video before he and I. Yeah, he'll well, he'll want to see this because we mentioned him. Well, you know, he'll want to see it. He's going to have but, the pride out of my hand. But that is a great example, though, of how athletics, fundraising, there's, there's, it really all goes together in so many ways, doesn't it, at Pittsburgh State? There's no question about it. We, you know, the studies almost nine out of ten people who give to athletics give to something else, and. You know, just like yesterday, I was at a gorilla gathering uh, with Dr. Paul Grimes, right, you know, right. talking about the, 
uh, the, the Kell School and, right. and what we're trying to do there. And I get as big a charge out of that as I do athletics. And sure. I think a lot of people be surprised to know that really arts is, is my love. I was in the musical all four years in high school. So you're I love being up here, absolutely. Up here, yeah. I've been in Brigadoon. I mean, I, I had a kilt on dancing around wow, singing. No, so, but, yeah, I did, exactly. We're gonna look for that video. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you'll find it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so, so you, you suffer from what a lot of people suffer from in this part of the country, and that's uh, humility. You do, you're, you're a humble person. Uh, but I'm gonna ask you questions, it's gonna make you look at your shoes. You got loafers on. Uh, and that is, over the last few years, if you had to put a number on the dollars that you've really participated in, been in the middle of, bringing you to this campus, what would that number be? No. And I know you don't wanna say it, but I'm asking you to say it. I mean, it's, it's a fair amount. Um, I, mean, I think I could safely say 15 million. That's a pretty good number. That's a pretty good number. And, uh, and I've been around a lot of that, and, and that's absolutely the truth. I mean, Kendall's really been right at the heart of these discussions, these conversations, the relationship building, and the reinforcing, and the nurturing of the relationships we have. And, and without him, those dollars wouldn't have come here. So I, I want to thank you. And, 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 and I know it's hard to talk about that, but it's, it's, it's real, and it's important. I'm going to say one thing. I think a lot of people you know, lump me in with sports and I get that because of what I did for so long. Mm -hmm. But I, I would say, actually, one scholarship that I'm the most proud of is the scholarship itself. Uh, it was a, kind of the first of its kind that provided a full, it was, you know, six figures, had nothing to do with sports. Right, right. And to me, the, those folks, they thanked me for getting them reconnected yeah, and they yeah. thanked me for allowing them the chance to give back. And right. I mean, there's a lot of people that want to do that. We just yeah. have to find them. Absolutely. And put those opportunities in front of them yes. and, and then continue to nurture those relationships. Kathleen, and I talked earlier today, Kathleen Flannery, and I think we have five major gift officers, but we have you know, as many as 10 people all together working in develop, really seriously in development. Those funds are, those salaries are paid by the foundation, which is great. But people talk to us periodically about, you know, the financial pressures. They say, well, we need more revenue. Well, this is an example of how that comes about, and it takes an investment on our part, but we're certainly returning a lot of dollars to the campus as we do that. And I want to say thank you for that and your work in that area. And we're not done, you yeah. know that. So I've asked everybody about mentors. Mm -hmm. And I know you came through this place and you had some pretty special people that uh, worked with you and taught you, and who's, who would you cite? You know, it's interesting. It was, I, I say it was um, Dr. Tom Bryant, he was my advisor uh, back before I think he was even a dean. And uh, so him, you know, becoming the, the president at a time, I, it was nice to be able to come back through my, my, my years in the NFL after the season and have familiar faces and certainly that being one of them. And, and he did a lot for me. So yeah, I would say that was one who definitely affected me. Yeah. He doesn't let go of you either, does he? When no. He, uh, when he's mentored and taught you, and when he sees you right now, he'd probably put you in a headlock. I mean, he literally he might, doesn't yeah, let go of you, right? I mean, he's, there, he's just like, is that he, I know he loves you, he cares he, about he, you. Yeah, he definitely cares, there's no doubt. I know, absolutely. Well, that's great. I don't have any more questions for you. Uh, well, I mean, and you're probably getting ready to get me off the stage as soon as possible, but uh, <laughs> with uh, what we had, I think turnaround's fair play. You, you, you got a hold of that video somehow and made it, um, I, you know, I'm in, the, I'm in the press. I ask questions, so we have questions, right? We do, oh, absolutely. Yeah, questions. So I think I should so, be doing that. So Kendall's gonna Very do good. that. So should we have like a locker room? Should I have the, you know, the jersey on? The, you probably is should. That when you, isn't that where you interview people? It is, absolutely, but I think if you did, I think we'd all be more than a little bit surprised. So um, <laughs> I don't know if hey, that's I what we wanna do right the, now. I put on the total football uniform one day. Well, I've had the photos to show, to prove it. Very nice. Yeah. We'll yeah. make a video of that. It, we, I, I think we have a video. <laughs> okay. Someday that video is going to show up. Well, we've got a few here, but no, I right. think the first right, one we're going to go with is, um, I mean, surely I need to come up with a few of my own. Uh, you saw the Chiefs uh, had a rough end to the season this year. Do you have any uh, quick fixes for that? <laughs> no. Okay. We will, uh, next subject. <laughs> Who's that? It's funny, back, I get that. Who's that backup quarterback? Oh, yeah. he's got to be the savior, right? Absolutely. I mean, he's got to come in. Best person is always the next man. Yeah, you know, we had there. this all planned, Chris, that uh, we were going to be uh, headed to the Super Bowl this week. I know. Right? Well, that was the whole deal. And then Kendall would be here and it'd be all Chiefs Nation all week. But anyway, it's all right. Nice. So, no. Anyway. Okay. No, I, I think I've got a good one. Okay. We, we've talked the NFL. For, for me, uh, 
you had four, I had four preseason games, and then I would have 16 regular season, and then hopefully um, have a postseason play after that. Uh, but, but for me as a player, then even, even as a broadcaster, came the offseason. I got a chance to recharge and, 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 and get back uh, in my groove and just kind of get things going again. When I look at you, and I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit closer than, than some, I, I see you have, in this day and age, you have a lot of challenges each and every day. One, how are you doing with all those? And then number two, how do you recharge? Yeah, that's a, that's, that, that's a qu- I'll get back to that. The, the thing I worry about, and I, and I mean this, is everybody here is taking on a bigger load. So I know people, and, and I appreciate it. Dr. Olson and I had somebody stop us in the hallway and said, you know, I feel for you guys right now with what's going on. That was a very nice gesture on the part of one of our professors. Uh, I, and I get that, and I appreciate that comment. But everybody's taking on more. Everybody feels that. And I think Aaron mentioned the word uh, unsettled, and that, that, that unsettled and feeling of anxiety about not knowing what, what's going to happen. So I, at first I feel that for everybody. I really do, and I'm concerned about that. And I see Sherry Brogan's car uh, parked up at the Alumni Center more than it probably should be. And I see Sherry sitting over here because of the time that she puts in. And, and that's, she's not alone. Uh, Howard Smith gets here at 4.30 in the morning. Of course, he goes home at 10 in the morning. Uh, <laughs> and Howard, Howard just loves to have his name mentioned, so I say that. <laughs> But, but, you know, really, long, long hours, and Howard, seriously, that people put in. So I, I worry about that for all. And, I, and I've, I'm committed to this. If, if it was a job, it'd be one thing, but it's, for me, it's really mission work. It's my alma mater. I've grown up in this region. I want to see this region grow and do better. So, so I, I, I get a lot of my energy from, from the successes that we have. It's not as much fun as we face the financial challenges. But I still try to keep my eye on that, that more distant ball of, of where, where are we going to be? How do we make sure this place, is, this place continues to be viable, continues to serve people in the future? And it will. It's been here over 100 years. And, uh, and it's our job as stewards of this place at this time to keep that going. Uh, m- many of you know I recharge by exercising, by walking and being on the treadmill. And get on the treadmill and watch Chris Matthews. What could be more relaxing than that? Uh, <laughs> You know, and so, so that, that really recharges me. Kathy and I get to step away a little bit periodically, and we try to carefully carve out those, those times to do that. And, uh, but I, I appreciate the folks who have reached out and said, you know, been encouraging and been supportive because we are all in this together, and we, we only are going to find the best pathway through it together. So, but I appreciate you asking that question. Okay. We'll go to some that were... Uh given today at a cost of four thousand a year for insurance last year then a four percent increase this year to 5280 uh, as a cost would you consider sending a delegation to topeka to re- renegotiate our price of insurance well we don't have enough time for me to talk about how i feel about health quest <laughs> i mean you really like health quest i mean i there you go i you know, the cost of, of the health insurance is one thing, and, and we're seeing that all over the country. Everybody's experiencing that. HealthQuest is a Kansas issue, and, and the folks who have been working around me closely, they know I've been pretty upset about the way HealthQuest is designed, the way Cerner put that whole system together, the reward system. I think it's got a lot of problems, and I've brought it to the attention of the Council of Presidents. I've brought it to the attention of the Board of Regents. Uh, we're, we're really, right now, we're, we're working on a little bit of legislation we think could help us. It's got a structural issue in terms of governance. And then you'll see us later this year really try to strategize and, and uh, conceptualize the concerns and, and a process to go forward. So we're on that. We're concerned about it. I, I do feel the, the concerns that everybody else has. And I didn't get my 50 points. I got 46. Just so irritated by that. We had a, a <laughs> hearing in Topeka last week where a state senator didn't get her points, so she drags the people in and kind of grills them for a while about it, about some of the kind of silliness that's in the system. So nobody on this campus designed it. I know the payroll and HR folks, they're trying to help us understand it, and I saw Taylor Gravett, new employee, he, he put out a newsletter the other day trying to help you know, guide us to the right information. I think that's a good thing, but it's a flawed, it's a flawed program. That's what I would argue. Uh, got to figure out how to work with it this year, but I hope in the next year we can make some progress and improve it. 
But again, okay. I got lots more to say about that. That was a pretty big lots question, more. actually. Yeah. Uh, this one, we'll take it down a little bit. Okay. Who is your favorite student? <laughs> but, seriously. But, Kendall, Kendall, who? who? I suppose who? I should say that's by John Botts. Yeah. <laughs> Man, do you work with Sean Nakarada? Because you seem to need a lot of attention. I don't, know what's going, I don't know what's going on there. I will maybe take it down geez, even a was, little bit more. Was, did he put that in there, really? Uh, he, he did. John. Because I really felt on the spot to answer it. <laughs> um, what socks do you have on? You know, this is going to really disappoint people. These are cotton fluffies. And I wasn't not, going to say anything. They're not, very, they're not very sexy. <laughs> but those are cotton fluffies. <clears throat> Eight ninety nine for a package of six. <laughs> you know, it's, it's the budget. <laughs> Got another one. I have to pass on one because I'm a football player and I can't read it. Uh, <laughs> but I'll get there in a minute. If flex time occurs, when would it be implemented? Well, I'm, I'm excited about that task force. I know today they launched a, a survey opportunity for people to provide some feedback. And uh, under the guidance of Mindy Kloniger, who's the chair of that, of that task force. And I'm anxious to see the kinds of ideas they come back with. I'm, I want to really have an open mind about, about it. Uh, I, I want to make sure we have opportunities to create community and create connections and make sure our working relationships are, you know, work well and are as they need to be, have a, the right environment. But I'm very anxious to see what, what they come up with. I think we've learned a lot from the summer. The summer school group, that committee put together a great way to flex our time. So uh, I think it would most likely be fall, but it might even be as late as January. I, I don't know. That, and, and no promises in terms of what, what, this, what will come about, but I think we've got a good process in place, and I have an open mind. I think the President's Council will, too, as to what we can implement. Okay. We'll raise it back up a little bit. And at the possibility of making fun of me, the word I couldn't read was raises. Um, so are raises possible in the near future? Wow, that's, that's a tough one. Uh, we, want, we want there to be raises. There's just no doubt about that. And that's something we continue to talk about, uh, continue to look at the numbers. Uh, with the, the loss of a million dollars as we started the year with $2 million shortfall on the revenue that, that we, below what last year's number was, makes it a very, very difficult uh, situation. What we've tried to do is we've worked with the legislature on fixing the salary increase that they put in place last year where they omitted a whole group of state employees. Really pushed pretty hard with some folks in critical positions to try to make that happen. Right now, that's probably our best play, and we'll continue to have those conversations on that. But uh, we don't feel good about that. I mean, I'll just tell you, that is not something we feel good about at all because we know with health insurance premiums going up and salary increases not available for most of our employees, you're losing ground. We get that, and we don't like that. Okay, that's all I've got for you. Seriously, we got all the well, questions. Well, I, I, I can manufacture one more. Um, no, I think we're... Uh, no. Who's we're your deep. favorite uh, former, former long Chiefs. snapper? Long snapper. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know I, I struggle. This is not something you need to think about. Is it? <laughs> hey, I got a question for you. Oh. <laughs> it's number 83, Kendall Gammon. Yes. Right. <laughs> oh, I thought you were just saying. No. So... Okay. Listen to this. How many times does the ball spin in order to be in the right location so that there are laces out? Laces out. Yeah. Laces out. How many? Uh, this is part of my talk that I, I give what a ball away with, so you guys will be ineligible if you hear some things. But three and a half times. Three it half rotates times. exactly three and a half times. And, uh, and then it's caught. It's yeah, it was placed. a slow day. I was yeah. trying to figure things out. So, yeah. Facilitate, but that, that, you know, that's interesting, though. It, the laces out is, is it's about facilitating success and really you could draw that to pittsburgh state to me pittsburgh state facilitates success for anyone and everyone whenever they can so and that shows you it's all about the detail too. drive yes. drilling down all the way to the detail how right. to make it work and how to be right at the top and mm -hmm. i'd say if you're in a super bowl you're right at the top you're at the top of our list thank you very thank much you. for being here Appreciate He's been hit in the head a few times, but he's still doing all right. I think he? he's all right, yeah. I think, he I think he is. And we just didn't know the other part of his body was taking a beating <laughs> as well. But, uh, wow, we, our time is up. That's but it. I hope, isn't that right? We're, That's we it. Said, We're out of time. 
So I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you, you felt a, a sense of, uh, again, community. You got a sense of our, the talent of our leadership and our governance group. And it's just, it is impressive, there's no doubt. And then you think about those six students representing the nearly 7,000 students across this campus that we deal with on a regular basis. And that is what it's about. We know that's what it's about. And then the commitment from these folks transfers to them. And, and like Ray said, we get some transformational kinds of experiences. It really does happen. Uh, before we close, I, I, I do have a moment where I need to talk about something that's, that's very sad, but I want to share it with you and then we'll, and then we'll close. Uh, overnight, uh, Kathleen Cameron passed away. And she is a professor, of course, in HPASS. And uh, we just learned about that this morning. And we knew we just, we needed to let you know. We didn't want you, you to leave here and then hear it from us. Uh, but it just reinforces this notion, Chris and I talked about this, every day matters, and how we treat each other every day matters, because you just don't know. And uh, she will be missed. She was really a fine teacher. She'd been with us a number of years. We'll have a, we'll have a, a, a release on her, and we'll speak to the campus about this loss. But I do want to express on behalf of the university our sympathy and condolences to her family, certainly to Malcolm, and to her colleagues, because Kathleen and I were talking earlier today that so many of our friends are co-workers, and we know their families, and we know their kids and their parents, and, and we get to know each other very deeply, really, and those relationships are very meaningful. In many ways, they're the most important relationships that we develop. And so uh, we'll miss her, and I, do, I did want to mention that. They, they tell me she was just terrific in the classroom, and, uh, and so as I thought about that, I thought about kind of this closing, and this is a classroom. Mm. This is a classroom that we're in right now. And Cynthia Allen and I have talked about that before. Joe Furman and I have talked about that. But this is a classroom we're in. And the neatest thing about this facility and what we're doing today is students ran it. Students are on the soundboard. Students are running the lights. Students help us get everything set up. And so we thought we'd end with a video that highlights them. I think that's great. That'd be cool. Yeah. So let's see that video now. Well, for me specifically, it's just a really great opportunity. I mean, working here has definitely taught me new skills. Because of this building and the things that I've learned here, I mean, I've just done all of this, this cool stuff that I never thought that I would be able to do. To be able to come in and say that I work at the Bicknell Center, I mean, as cheesy as it sounds, I mean, it's honestly a dream come true to work here because I have had unbelievable transformational experiences in this building. You're working towards something that's way bigger than yourself, and you get to be a part of crazy awesome shows like Broadway, like the Count Basie Big Band, stuff like that. People like legendary things. Because of the Bicknell Family Center for the Arts, I'm a better person, a better leader, a better worker, and I know that as soon as I graduate here, I can tackle whatever I need to tackle. I can do whatever I need to do. This Family Center for the Arts has given me all the tools I need. It has been a really good experience for me working at the Bicknell. The things I've been able to learn here are invaluable, and I think that they will be able to help me in my next endeavor. This facility as a classroom has prepared me for the future because my superiors are very hands-on with learning. They're there to teach me and help me, and not just I'm not just a worker carrying out the day's duties, they, they really want me to succeed. Wow, that's what it's about right there. Thank you all, have a great semester. Thank you all very much. <laughs>